So uh, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for uh, joining our uh, workshop of uh, the Merchant of Venice. Uh, very excited that uh, you can be here and be part of uh, this ongoing exploration of uh, the scene with this group. They've been working for a few weeks. Uh, I just want to give you a little bit of context of uh, what this is and what we've been doing. So my name is Nathan Agan. I'm the host and producer of The Working Actor's Journey, started as a podcast, and over the last year uh, has uh, developed into a series of workshops uh, like this uh, that has just kind of come out of discussions of what we can do with this medium, with this time. Uh, and so we've been able to combine uh, professional actors, directors, coaches with uh, actors, uh, you know, maybe in the first decade of their career, uh, working on these scenes in a way that rarely happens at a professional level. Uh, you know, there's so much uh, of a necessity to, you know, figure out blocking and, and all the other production elements that uh, to be able to have a month uh, to really just explore one scene is such a luxury and uh, everybody's been enjoying that. Uh, and so you will see the uh, the fifth act, uh, act five, scene one, part of that from uh, Merchant of Venice today. And uh, uh, our director will share a little bit more about uh, where we are in the play. Um, but I just want to highlight a couple other things uh, about this program and, and tell you about a couple of things uh, uh, coming up. Um, so one of the things we're most excited about with this project is that, uh, and, I, and I was taught this word recently or, or taught this phrase, is that we can be very conscious about uh, gender and age and color uh, when we're working in this format that uh, other theaters might not be able to. And, and of course, the phrase that often comes up is uh, gender blind or color blind or age blind. And of course, uh, we are anything but blind to that. We are actually very acutely aware uh, when, you know, as an audience member or a theater is doing that. So it just allows us to be very conscious about, uh, you know, involving different people and having people play roles that they might not otherwise play at a traditional theater. So that's been an, uh, another exciting part about this in addition to being able to explore the material in this way. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else do I have I want to say? Oh, yes. Um, so with each presentation, we've uh, selected a charity. Uh, this afternoon's charity is the Innocence Project. Uh, they are committed to exonerating individuals who have been wrongly convicted. Uh, we really appreciate uh, those who have already made donations. Um, but if you'd like to donate directly, you can go to innocenceproject.org. I'll put uh, a link in the chat box. Uh, and uh, if you are enjoying you know, this little peek into the process, we just launched a new program called Repertory, which is kind of modeled uh, after uh, the repertory companies of the regional theater's heyday, where you have a bunch of actors working on uh, you know, a number of parts. And so we have one company of actors uh, working on Shakespeare's Twelfth Night with two directors, uh, two different days, four scenes, everybody's playing different parts. Uh, and uh, you can, you know, sit in and uh, see that process, see, you know, how they explore those scenes. Uh, I'll put a link uh, in the chat uh, for you to uh, learn more about that. Um, but uh, I think, let's see, let me double check my notes. I think that's about all from me. The other thing with the, uh, the chat box, if you have any questions uh, as you're watching this, you're curious about the process of, of part of the uh, scene, uh, put those questions in the Zoom chat. I'll collect those and uh, we'll have a little bit of a talk back discussion at the end. Uh, and I think that's that's it for me that I'm good. Uh, I'm always trying to, you know, get get my piece more and more succinct. So I think three to four minutes is about all I need to do. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Brendan Fox, uh, the director for the scene. And uh, that's it. Very excited. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, I, I want to thank you. Um, for en enlisting me or reaching out to me um, to be part of this. I had been watching over many months uh, with envy, uh, many artists I know and love participating in these scenes and workshops. And uh, so I, I appreciate when I basically stalked you, ran you, ran you to the ground and said, how do I, how, how do I get in on this? So um, little did I know what, what a fantastic uh, time uh, I hopefully we've had. Um, so I also want to just start with and we'll probably end with a big thank you to all of you actors for your time and your talent um, and and your your thoughts um, and vulnerability exploring this this fascinating uh, piece so um, so thank you um, I'm I, I'm I also love that there's no opening night no closing night like we just will stop right 
um, which is also how I like to approach, you know, productions. We just stopped rehearsing at some point and say, okay, I guess we're gonna, we'll, we'll open this now. But that sense of a continuum and an evolution and always, always a, a, as a process, I think, is exciting. So, you know, just to maybe state the obvious, I, I hope we will all continue today to embrace new ideas, what we thought about since last week, um, and uh, and see where the scene goes today. Uh, to uh, you know, to use Netflix's phrase of previously on, um, uh, can we collectively, you know, uh, catch up our, ourselves and any viewers on um, what what are the salient points we need to know as we are we're dropping the needle down late in Act Five, Scene One, and we will take it all the way to the end. I should say right from the start for those who are. Uh, familiar with uh, the play and the scene, there are a couple of characters that actually are present for the scene, but are not uh, and do not have uh, text. And that, are, that is Lorenzo and, and um, Jessica. Um, and they will be ref, you know, referred to. And, and so for those who are watching, just keep that in mind as, as the events unfold. I think that's, that, that's a, I think a really uh, fascinating you know, element to the scene that uh, there, there's, there's a sense of performance as we've talked about Right group and 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 who are we performing for and not only for each other but even those who are not actually have any text. So Lorenzo and Jessica are there. This takes place at Belmont, right outside of the house of Portia, um, being portrayed by Amber uh, today and her servant Nerissa. Um, uh, Aubrey and Amber, would would you mind um, uh, helping me fill in? Like what? Where did you just? You've just arrived right before we start the scene. And um, can you share where they just came from? Sure, Amber, do you wanna, I mean, you know, you were doing most of the talking where we were before. So, um, <laughs> oh, we were just, you know, dressed up as guys uh, like you do in Shakespeare. Uh, and uh, we were just um, at a trial. Uh, trying to save some lives and succeeding. Portia doing most of the heavy lifting there. Um, but uh, Antonio's life was on the line for his friend Bassanio and uh, uh, Shylock was demanding um, a pound of flesh for a bargain that they had made. And uh, it was it was sort of up to Portia in particular, I think, to dress as a man to, to get him out of that. Uh, right, Amber, am I good so far? Do you want yeah, to reveal yeah, the results after, of your work? <laughs> yeah, after some all-star uh, attorneying by Portia and Nerissa, very bright, um, smart women, we have saved Antonio's life um, and immediately raced back home to try to beat them coming home from the trial. Um, and during the trial, they gave away rings we had given to them as gifts. So we are kind of plodding through um, how we will confront them about this indiscretion, the scene. Yeah, and I, I think it's, and it, that's great. And I, I love uh, that um, it's important to, in terms of the rings, a little bit of backstory that we will hear about um, from um, Sarah as Graziano and, and Marcello as Bassanio, that at first when you, uh, Amber and, and Aubrey asked for rings, you know, when they offered to pay, right? You, you said you didn't need any payment, but you will take those rings. And at first, the men said no, right? And and you thought that was that was that was it, and we were packing up to go. And then I believe Ross, right? Antonio, when Antonio heard this, he said, uh, "Give him the rings, right?" I think so, the yeah. The yeah, he, he kind of says, "Really, guys? I mean, <laughs> I, they just saved this, this guy. Just this guy just saved my life. The least you could do, maybe." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so they sent ran after, and yeah, so. Yeah, we're all to blame here. <laughs> I don't know if we said this, but so we, so I had married uh, Graciano, Portia had married Bassanio, uh, and that was the exchange of rings. But the marriages have not yet been um, consummated, as they say. So, so that's where we sort of things stand. So we've we've had the ceremony, we've exchanged the rings and the oaths and all of the important things, uh, except for that one last important piece of the puzzle that hasn't happened yet. Great, Sarah. Anything else you want to add um, from Graciano? Yeah, I can just add that um, uh, although Bassanio was under great pressure by his friend Antonio to give his ring up, uh, Gratiano seems to have had less pressure to give his ring up. We don't actually see that scene happen. So it's, it's up to the imagination as far as um, 
who is telling the truth, Gratiano or Nerissa, as far as exactly how that exchange went down. Yeah, that that and that's something we've we've discussed, right, in pre in previous um, um, workshop sessions of, of what uh, how the differences between Gratiano and Bassani in terms of what they promised and what you know and and how how reluctant or not very reluctant they were about parting with the rings. And, and the differences between Portia and Nerissa in terms of how they deal with the, what happened with these rings. And, and I think what, one thing we, I think it's, that's helpful to note for anyone um, watching is uh, we started off uh, fairly early in our process talking about the given circumstances, not just in terms of the plot, but one thing I love to explore with Shakespeare is time, day, um, energy level, um, you know, exhaustion, uh, hydration, right? All those very human things that actually can affect how you um, go through this scene. And that no one, you know, uh, we, we figured out that timeline wise, right? This is essentially happening, this scene is happening just before dawn, the morning-ish after the trial. So no one has gotten any sleep, right? Everyone has basically made a beeline back to Belmont um, and that's how they're uh, approaching these these new events um, from from that place. Right. And also, we should probably mention that the trial not only did Shylock not get the pound of flesh, but got something much worse. Uh, so that we're all coming also back from this Shylock being forced to convert, mm -hmm. uh, give up his his religion, um, which was something I think that wasn't initially part of the the bargain. That is. Uh, that we're coming into and that his daughter is here in this scene and doesn't have any lines. So yeah, so there's just this whole other element yeah. uh, that is isn't that is not really dealt with, but is unspoken, I think. Yeah. And and what 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 do people expect? We were talking with this, right, Mar uh, Marcelo and Ross and Sarah about when the men enter Belmont, um, there's a, uh, what what would you how would you describe their their state of mind what we were what we were talking about last week yeah we, I, mean, I think we had talked about uh, a little elation they had been maybe drinking they're glad to be home the wives consummation may be happening things things are good they they expect things to be like yeah we did the thing we did good the women and yeah. uh, and that, that we love um, not just uh, yeah. the, the carnal thing but they 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 truly love their they're, they're women. They've just achieved everything they set out to do in this play. Mm. Yeah. They got mm. their wives, they got Antonio off. This is the happiest moment of the play yeah. for them. And, and the expectation that, they're, that they're, the welcome home is going to be uh, really uh, exciting. And also I, I think something we touched on Marcel and Ross and Amber is this moment where you, Bassanio, get to share with your new wife, your introduce her to your best friend, your the person who has meant the most to you beyond besides Portia. Right. He's the it, man. Right. That so I think that maybe that's part of the agenda too, is uh -huh. that the hail the conquering heroes and these are the two most important people in my life. And now they get to meet under right. what we think is going to be wonderful circumstances. Right. Um Right at the end of last session, I just asked us to think about exits, oh, yeah. which we can come back to. One, we, I, I think it would be it would be great to kind of go back to the top and and take a a whack at this and and um, uh, see what happens and rediscover and um, where we land. Uh, but I, I I have a thought, and I just want to offer this up. To see what we, what we think. I would love for us to play with this idea of maybe in our exits, turning off our, our cameras and in, in sort of maybe in a staggered um, order. And let me know your thoughts on this, but if, if what if Graziano and Nerissa exit first after Graziano <laughs> gives his final um, spiel about what he's learned? Um, and that I, I think that's something we can, again, play with in terms of Aubrey, whether that's off of you or Sarah, but that, um, non-verbally an invitation to, you know, head off into the house. Once you two go, then I, I feel like maybe Marcelo and Amber, that is their 
a, a, a way, a, a thought about who might then end, exit next. And then I think Ross, I would just love to see what happens if, if you are alone for a moment before you, you leave or, or maybe not, or maybe not go into the house. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know something for us to play with, but that's, how does that strike people as a first pass? Strikes me as a plan. Yes. Yeah. Like it. Right. Um, two other just kind of general thoughts on, on the text as we are, as we get taken from the top. Um, as I was looking at my notes from last week, uh, one is I, what I love is that everyone is, I think, approaching this with, we've really dug into the stakes for everyone. What is, what is, what is, what is important and how important all of this is and the clash of tones and, and not playing the other person's play, right? And letting that collision be really exciting and, and, and energized. And I, I would encourage us to hold on to that. And I love that everyone's driving to the ends of the thoughts. At the same time, I would also encourage us to keep finding those commas, those semicolons, a place to, to, do, to do some quick breaths, some, a chance to, so that, and when you land, when you get to the end of a thought, a period, exclamation point, question mark, let yourself take that breath, right? For us, for you, for your scene partner. And it, would allow, it will allow us, I think, if we want to shift gears or go to a new idea or new thought or pivot, then it, it, that breath, I think, will allow us to make that shift with even more breath and fullness. Does that make sense? Yep. There were, there, and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I would much rather of us err on the side of propulsion and, and energy and not be precious and state about it, but just something to think about. The other, number two is, um, let's keep in mind the difference between when the characters have a kind of legato of, um, text versus staccato. When are things, when, when do things have a sort of, um, with their, you know, longer lines, um, multisyllabic words, and, and when, when are the characters um, more monosyllabic and, and have a more stutter stop rhythm? You know, I think we, we're doing that a little, I think we can lean into the difference and, I, and, and see what that means, right? What, what happens when they are um, not, in, not indulging in um, high level vocabulary, but, uh, and, and that, that could reference something really positive or it could be something curt or, confused, but just, um, I think there's, those are, those are two a avenues I'd love for us to keep in mind. Cool. Sound good? Yep. Sounds good. Great. So, um, let's take our time and, um, when you're ready from the top, please. This night me thinks is but the daylight sick. <laughs> Tis a day such as the day is when the sun is hid. <laughs> oh, we hold day with the antipodes if you would walk in the absence of the sun. <laughs> let me give light, but let me not be light. For a light wife doth make a heavy husband and never be Bassanio so for me. But God sort all, you are welcome home, my lord. Oh, I thank you, madam. Give welcome to my friend. This is the man. This is Antonio, to whom I am so infinitely bound. You should, and all sense be much bound to him. For as I hear, he was much bound for you. <laughs> no more than I am well acquitted of. Sir, you are very welcome to our house. It must appear in other ways than words. Therefore, I scant this breathing courtesy. By yonder moon, I swear you do me wrong. In faith, I gave it to the judge's clerk. Would he were guilt that had it for my part, since you do take it love so much at heart? A quarrel? Oh, already, what's the matter? A hoop of gold, a paltry ring that she did give me, whose posy was for all the, uh, for all the world, like Cutler's poetry upon a knife, love me and leave me not. What talk you of the posy or the value? You swore to me when I did give it you that you would wear it till your hour of death and that it should lie with you in your grave. Though not for me, yet for your vehement oaths, you should have been respected and have kept it. 
gave it a judge's clerk. No, God's my judge. The clerk will ne'er wear hair on his face that had it. He will, and he lived to be a man. Aye, if a woman lived to be a man. Now, by this, by this hand, I gave it to a youth, a, a kind of boy, a, a little scrubbed boy, no higher than thyself, the judge's clerk, a prating boy that begged it as a fee. I could not for my heart deny it him. You were to blame, I must be plain with you, to part so slightly with your wife's first gift, a thing stuck on with your oaths upon your finger and so riveted with faith unto your flesh. I gave my love a ring and made him swear never to part with it. And here he stands. I dare be sworn for him. He would not leave it nor pluck it from his finger for the wealth the world masters. Now. In faith, Gratiano, you give your wife too unkind a cause of grief. And for me, I should be mad at it. Why, I were best to cut my left hand off and swear I lost the ring defending it. My Lord Bassanio gave his ring away to the judge that begged it, and indeed deserved it too. And then the boy, his clerk, that, that took some, some pains in writing, he begged mine, and neither man nor master would take aught but the two rings. What ring gave you, my lord? Not that I hope what you received of me. If I could add a lie unto a fault, I would deny it. But uh, you see, my finger hath not a ring upon it. It is gone. Even so void is your false heart of truth. By heaven, I will ne'er come to your bed until I see the ring. Nor I in yours till I again see mine. Sweet, sweet Portia. If you did know to whom I gave the ring, if you did know for whom I gave the ring, and would conceive for what I gave the ring, and how unwillingly I left the ring, when naught would be accepted but the ring, you would abate the strength of your displeasure. If you had known the virtue of the ring, or half her worthiness that gave the ring, or your own honor to contain the ring, you would not then have parted with the ring. What man is there so much unreasonable if you had pleased to have defended it? Well, in terms of zeal, wanted the modesty to urge that thing held as a ceremony. Nerissa teaches me what to believe. I'll die for it till some woman had the ring. No. By my honor, madam, by my soul, no woman had it, but a civil doctor, which did refuse three thousand ducats of me and beg the ring, the which I did deny him and suffered him to go displeased away, even he that had held up the very life of my dear friend. What should I say, sweet lady? I was enforced to send it after him. I was beset with shame and courtesy. My honor would not let ingratitude so much besmear it. Pardon me, good lady, for by these blessed candles of the night, had you been there, I think you would have begged the ring for me to give the worthy doctor. <laughs> Let not that doctor e'er come near my house since he hath got the jewel that I loved and that which you did wear to keep for me. I will become as liberal as you. I'll not deny him anything I have. No, not my body nor my husband's bed. No, him I shall. I am well sure of it. Lie not a night from home. Watch me like Argus. If you do not, if I be left alone now by mine honor, which is yet mine own, I'll have that doctor from my bedfellow. And I, his clerk, before be well advised how you do leave me to mine own protection. <laughs> well, do you so? Let me not take him then, for if I do, I'll mar the young clerk's pen. Oh, I am the unhappy subject of these quarrels. Sir, uh, grieve not you. You are welcome, notwithstanding. Portia, forgive me this enforced wrong, and in the hearing of these many friends, I swear to thee, even by thine own fair eyes, wherein I see myself, that I will... In, in both mine eyes, he doubly sees himself. In each eye one. Swear by your double self, and there's an oath of credit. Nay, but hear me. Pardon this fault, and by my soul, I swear, I never more will break an oath with thee. I once did lend my body for his wealth, which, but for him that had your husband's ring, had quite miscarried. I dare be bound again, my soul upon the forfeit, that your lord will never more break faith advisedly. Mm -hmm. Then you shall be his surety. Give him this, and bid him keep it better than the other. Here, Lord Bassanio, swear to keep this ring. But, 
By heaven, it is the same I gave the doctor. I had it of him. Pardon me, Bastanio, for by this ring, the doctor lay with me. Oh, and pardon me, my gentle Gratiano, for that same scrubbed boy, the doctor's clerk, in lieu of this, last night did lie with me. Why? This is like the mending of highways in summer where the ways are fair enough. What? Are we cuckolds? Ere we have deserved it? Speak not so grossly. You are all amazed. Here is a letter. Read it at your leisure. It comes from Padua, from Bellario. There you shall find that Portia was the doctor. Nerissa there, her clerk, Lorenzo here, shall witness I set forth as soon as you, and even but now return. I have not yet entered my house. Antonio, you are welcome, and I have better news in store for you than you expect. Unseal this letter. There you shall find three of your groceries are richly come to harbor suddenly. You shall not know by what strange accident I chanced on this letter. I am dumb. Were you the doctor, and I knew you not? Were you the clerk that is to make me cuckold? I... But the clerk that never means to do it, unless he live to be a man. Sweet doctor, you shall be my bedfellow. When I am absent, then lie with my wife. Sweet lady, you have given me life and living. For here I read for certain that my ships are safely come to road. How now, Lorenzo? My clerk hath some good comforts for you too. Aye, and I'll give them him without a fee. There do I give to you and Jessica from the rich Drew, Jew a special deed of gift after his death of all he dies possessed of. It is almost morning, and yet I am sure you are not satisfied of all these events at full. Let us go in and charge us there upon these interrogatories, and we shall answer all things faithfully. Let it be so. The first interrogatory that my Nerissa shall be sworn on is, whether till the next night she had rather stay or go to bed now, being two hours today. But were the day come, I should wish it dark till I were couching with the doctor's clerk. <clears throat> well, while I live, I'll fear no other thing so sore as keeping safe Nerissa's ring. Mm. Lovely. Yeah, that's, boy, that's wonderful. Um, Marcel, do you have your hand up or are you just resting? No, I'm just, uh, no, no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm only a week after classes are done. So I'm, you know, this <laughs> muscle memory kicks in. Uh, yeah, Ross, I, I, uh, I really loved that moment with you and the, the paper, the, 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 just you sort of processing everything that's, that's going on and, and, watching each each pair pair off and and then leaving you sort of twisting in the wind may makes a lot of sense um i did uh, my false exit I'm, spe I'm i'm known for that one i was i was like marcelo was just yeah barsani was just piecing out early it's just yeah. uh, <laughs> um Oops. so what so what, did, what what did we discover that time what what's uh, as as it's you know it's been a week and as we skied down the slalom what what uh, what it came up. I mean, I found myself really, really wanting her to just, hey, you, you got to understand the circumstances. I mean, I felt in those little the speeches where he's trying to convince her um, that, that it was more driven, for, a little more driven for me, that I would just more, I, I don't understand why you don't understand. Mm -hmm. it's, um, mm -hmm. You know, it's like conversations I have with my wife sometimes. Why, why don't you understand? It's so clear. I'm, see, you see, and he lays it out and you go, what, right? Yeah. So, Mm, not so much. 
Well, and, and I wonder, Marcella, I, I saw that and there was a level of intensity and I felt like that, that it was even more important for you this time to, to help to try to get Portia to see this. And I, I would just wonder as we, when we come back and take another pass at it, that what, what is it like for him who always has managed to kind of come out on top, right? And, and charm and persuade and it's uh, and and he has this super confidence right that yeah. it, it, that first of all the the shock of the ring second of all the shock that they you think they cheated on you and the third is were you the doctor and yeah. especially that question really jumped out at me for you and for amber and and for all four couples of this i'm wondering if marcelo there's a how much can he change even at, in the last few moments of the play of, do I know anything about anyone, least of all her? Yeah, so you're, what you're saying then, is, so, so that to make that turn to be a little more, uh, not, not desperate in trying to convince her, but more suave and using his charms so that then when that comes, and have I been just, yeah, so that can make yeah. that turn. Well, I think, I think it's both. I, yeah. I think you can find, you know, keep using those different tools. I think there can be some some moments more of charm. Like I was thinking about the looking in her eyes moment, but that that was something in, I took a note about where I feel like Marcelo. What if what if that's a moment of more charm and intimacy of mm. of just you talking to her? This kind of thing we can do on Zoom, right? Wait, if you're right, right. down here and just honey, it's yeah. just us, right? Yeah, and and that way that gives Amber a chance to go. Oh, everyone, check this out, right? So sort of you know, you were setting up the candles for a little dinner here and she just suddenly, you know, so there's just options between the desperation, the urgency, then you switch to charm. But then I think in those final, when the rug gets pulled out two or three times, I just wonder myself if it just gets potentially even just simpler and wonder, yeah. like, who, who is this person? Right. You know, who, who, I don't mean this in a negative way, but what I, 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 you are now, you know, as she said, everyone is amazed. And I think that sense of being dumbstruck, I, I would encourage you and, and Graziano to potentially lean into, we are so overmatched yeah. and we do not know anything about anything. Yeah. And so that it, it keeps us from jumping on the lily pad at the end going, it's all good. I, 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 I wonder if this actually shakes you to the core. Right. Um, so when you're calling her, you know, sweet doctor, is it, is it potentially even more fragile, more, more tentative, a sense of an olive branch or a, 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 a new negotiation to figure out what comes next? Yeah. Does that... How does that end with, with, yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. And 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 you know and and I mean and you know Sarah, I I, I think obviously they, they they're on somewhat different tracks, but I I think there is something maybe for for both of them and to have to really be checked by the the, the you know these these revelations come fast and furious, yeah. um, which barely do you have time to register that they have they've just cheated on you when they go, actually, no, <laughs> right? So th those, I, I think you can, both of you can see what happens if it, if it actually, in a way, you, you both have to kind of approach them differently. And, and you're coming up with a new language at the end, which might help us see a way forward with you four. Mm -hmm. That's like, yeah, Sarah? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always a fan of, of men being checked by women. This is always a good choice. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, being but, in awe of their intelligence and brilliance. Yeah, ex exactly. So, well, and, so, and we've got the text, right? So like there, I mean, I think, and I, so what, that being said, I wonder, Amber, I would, I would just, I would encourage you also to think about that shift of, you were all, amazed and then you shift to okay so here's some money business here's some that's that struck me as a huge shift <laughs> from what we had just gone through and yeah. I, I i don't know amber what, what are your thoughts on that about like that what what what's what's that 
that turn like for for her because I I found that that could be really interesting to watch her if if we go in this direction of watching Bassanio see you with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. I I mean I was thinking through what you said about the. Um... I swear to thee, even by my own fair eyes, I had noticed this past how much I talk to Nerissa or how much I say is for her and not for the men because they're not going to understand it until later. But we are really joking with each other um, because they're they're just not up to speed yet. But that, that turn I take there coming after that once I did lend my body. Yeah. I, I think that has to be it. And I don't I don't know if she maybe thinks or understands that Antonio is the smartest of them. Um, but I think it's it's something in there. My soul upon the forfeit. Yeah. I I I I wonder whether, yeah, whether he's the smartest. I I, I felt in that moment for you, Ross, that you were offering up a level of authenticity we hadn't seen yet. Um, right. Well, it's, uh, I, th I think, I think we talked a little bit about this, uh, la last week, but you know, how do the guys have already broken their oaths convince someone that they're going to keep their oath now when there's, you know, you, you've already, you've already broken it. So what, what do you, what do you have now to swear by? And since Antonio is, is to, to this point has been the, the sacrificial friend and has, you know, sworn an oath to basically give up his life if he forfeits on the money, which he did. And, you know, he was going to be forced to keep that. This is sort of a Antonio and Antonio's body and soul and, you know, wealth. And th this is sort of the only thing that hasn't, the only s sacred bond uh, that hasn't really been, been forsworn in a way. Um, and Bassanio has been true to Antonio in a way that he hasn't necessarily been to Portia yet, um, yeah. which also I think is why maybe Portia says, okay, you're going to be a surety and you're also, you, you, you make him do this. You know, mm -hmm. it's sort of the, the, this is, you know, we, we got married, maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm speculating, but we got married and then you went and you did this thing for your best friend at cost of my honor you have to give up your best friend. Your best best friend has to be second, and we're going to make him give you away in front in front of people right now. Mm. Um, I like that, Ross. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, other thoughts uh, from the that I path? A, I have a small thing, but and on, on the other hand, not a small thing, and I don't know how to deal with it here, which is that last beat with Lorenzo and Jessica, who of course aren't here. Yeah. But it's also the last beat of a really, really tricky, complicated plot throughout Merchant of Venice, which is what we've done to Shylock and what happens to his daughter. And here we got a bunch of money from him and you get to have it. Mm -hmm. But we also did terrible things to him. I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't think I've even worked out how Nerissa feels about it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of commas. It's like, it's a really sort of tr like, it's, here I do give this from this. It's just like, it's a tricky, yeah, even the even the punctuation to me feels like it's clunky, I think on purpose. Yeah. But, um, anyway, it just like- I, No, I, I, I love that, Aubrey. I mean, I, I think I saw, I see a shift in I and I'll give them him without a fee, right? So my clerk has some good comforts too for you. Um, there's a bit of that old banter, right? The clerk, quote unquote, that Amber, you sort of remind us of who she, of who Nerissa was, right? And I, I and I feel like Nerissa says yes, and I'll, I'll actually, unlike any lawyer ever, I will, I will do, I will conduct my business for gratis. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think if if you and Amber want to play with leaning into that, but um bum, right? That sort of like sassy and then there, there's the reality of now you have to look at Lorenzo and do this I I would encourage you to lean into those commas and let it have that bumpiness that it feels like you're you, you, maybe this is the most important thing Nerissa's ever done and the most complicated thing I was thinking about that Brenda like why do I give this to you Aubrey yeah because first I ask Lorenzo how he is he does not respond. 
and then I throw it on you with a joke. My God. Give well, yeah, yeah. I mean, dialogue or call him Jessica's father. You say from the rich, rich Jew. Jew, which again, yeah, even just like saying that, I was like, that's yeah, I got like, such a strange way of describing someone who you spent, you know, hours in a courtroom with. And anyway, but, but is it, but uh, Aubrey, I would complicate that by saying, is it strange for someone of the time that has where this um, anti Semitism is, is baked into the society? Mm-hmm. No, that, probably not. No, it's probably you know I mean? kind. It's probably <laughs> one of the kinder things people say. Yes, yeah. Also, Which I think, Sh- yeah, Sh- go ahead, Shylock's dis- basically disowned his his daughter too. So I, I wonder if to ca- to say from your father if that how complicated That's that is too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but he has a name, and everyone else has been yeah. referred to by who they played in the court and their name. Yeah, True. but he's but he's he's not. But they 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 don't humanize him by giving him the name. Yeah, and I, I think you're absolutely right, Aubrey. That that to me that's it. It's it's very similar that that complicated moment near the end of Othello, where Emilia, who has been victimized by Iago in many ways, uh, in the final scene, and sees what Othello has uh, when Othello has killed Desdemona, and she tears into him with incredibly racist language. Mm-hmm which is always, you know, it's a very powerful moment, I think, in any production where the audience has to reckon with that and the systemic racism in that play that reaches out to everyone, like it or not. Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like it's in the water, you know, it's, it's and, and that, that it, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, that she has to make a meal out of it, right? The way Graziano might, mm-hmm. but, yeah, that you know, that is a conscious choice to not call him by name, to to you know to uh, to have the but why you decide I'm still back on Amber why you give it to her to do. I don't know. I don't know if it's like we're walking back from the court and I got a your I'm holding a piece of paper and she's holding a piece of paper and on the walk we realize who has what like it 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 feels too casual I think think which is half of what you're touching on, Aubrey. It's like the transition of joke, joke, joke to like, oh, by the way, once your dad dies. When your dad's dead, here's, you get all this money. Sweet. like, I want to call him a Jew, but he's really not anymore because we just forced him to give up his religion. And he disowned you. And yeah, so like just everything that's going on underneath this, like, hey, here's some money when your dad's dead. Yeah. True, but uh, uh, Aubrey, when I'm- To Lorenzo, not Jessica, really. Yeah, no, it's it's true. It's still to Lorenzo. It's not to Jessica, but- I also am looking at the text here, Aubrey, and saying, therefore do I give to you and Jessica from the rich Jew a special deed of gift after his death. This, this feels legalese to me. This doesn't feel casual or, oh, by the way, mm. it, it feels like you're channeling the court again. Yeah, In, well, me, oh, sorry. yeah go ahead, sir. Well, it just, you know, Shylock presumably has been forced to convert at this point. And so it feels like this nice touch to point out that even after Shylock's conversion, he's still not going to be accepted as a peer. We're still going to refer to him as the Jew. You can convert all you want and you're still not going to be equal with us in society. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that there's, there's a, yeah, there's an official aspect of it too. Yeah. Maybe, so maybe I'm, I, I'm going to walk back my, my earlier thought of instead of it being banter, maybe by using my, the clerk, Amber, is it's that a, formal. is that a, yeah. Mm. It's formalized. It's a, it's a, it's a, cl- a cue to Aubrey to uh, channel the court. Yeah. We need to know the official stance on this one. Yeah. So they understand it. I think that that makes more sense to me. Um, it's I mean, it's I mean, also I mean, exhausting. So like for us to like have time and energy to like after all the the we're gonna sleep with other people jokes to make I don't know. No, I, I, I absolutely. Like, I mean, that, I like that choice. Yeah, Narissa still doesn't. I, mean, I think it's true to form. Narissa does like does get in a little lawyer joke, but it doesn't have to be a big one, right? It doesn't have to be a a, a, a major need, event. Yeah, we don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You like but that it, too. It, it gives you a sort of a sober a, a, a sober side to Narissa that I think is fascinating and a, and a, a very revealing moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, she takes this seriously. She gives that that paper to that 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 deed 
we we hear about how she refers to Shylock, um, and you you do become the clerk again. Yeah, um, that's helpful. Yeah, go Shakespeare packing in a bunch in like <laughs> three lines. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, that's that's what I love about the end of any of his plays. It's it feels like there's st there's still so many so much to unpack, and these characters are still going through things to the very last moment. Mm -hmm. It's no one's coasting to the end. Um, uh, a, a couple of quick thoughts uh, from the, uh, at the top, Marcel, could, could you hold on, could we try holding off on the laughing until after Amber's full line? Yeah, it's interesting because I, I um, because of the nature of uh, Zoom, I had written about a laugh before we had talked about was uh, from last week. And yeah. then I did, and I thought, oh, that's not going to work because it's, you know, you know it, it, it just doesn't work on Zoom. Yeah. And then, uh, yes, yes, the answer to your question, yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but I, I'm, no, I'm glad you tried it because it was like, it, what, you're right, we, we were thinking like, what would it be like if we tried this? And I think that, like, I, like we've discussed in the past few weeks, what would work beautifully on stage with, a, with a hearing you as they come in. But I, 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 part of the reason, too, is I feel like, Amber, what I am really interested in is the melancholy you're bringing to Portia at the top, that however this, I'm gonna be an incredibly probably unhelpful director here for a second. <laughs> How, if, I, I, I feel like I would encourage you to, to not let go of that ever in the scene, in whatever way that takes place. I don't mean that that's the dominant note, but mm -hmm. there is a, there is the sadder and but wiser you and Nerissa having yeah. seen this toxic masculinity, seeing the anti-Semitism, the what now about our men and the 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 what we were talking about your compass spinning, right? That you're like, Aubrey's had to be like, by the way, that is your that's your window, that's your light, that's your music. And that will allow, I think that it could bring out some interesting notes later in the scene. Yeah, and I think especially if Marcel is still playing with that, who like, who is this person I'm married to now? And like, what what else are you capable of? Yeah. Um, for us to both hold that is interesting. Yeah, so you're both thinking, who are you? I, I, yeah. I don't know, who are you? Yeah. You know, we're, we're, maybe we're, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, and I'm wondering, Amber, when, you know, that, you know, we talked about that pivot, that switch to, oh, husband, you know, and mm -hmm. it, which I think is, is great. I, I wonder what happens if it occurred to me that in, as an alternative to, the, to her 180, is there anything in using that text to get to where he is? Yeah rather than flipping a switch that you have to actually, it's, it takes, it costs you a little bit to, you know, shift away from the melancholy to pull yourself out of that place. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the God sort all is a nice spot for that. Or yeah. even after the, the, you should all sense be much bound to him. Like at some point I, I got to get it together. But the fact that I say it must appear in other ways than in words when I'm welcoming Antonio yeah. makes me think I have not been a good host until this point. And I'm mm. like, I know I haven't appeared it. Mm -hmm. um, you are <laughs> welcome. Well, I, I absolutely agree. But I also, I would add, Amber, I think Porsche's on a bad day is a lot of people's excellent day. Sure, I would agree. I think she's her own worst critic. Mm. One of the reasons I love about her, <laughs> one of the many things I love, that she she's like, I, you know what I mean? And I, I think that Ross, I mean, you're playing this nicely of which if she's going, uh, well, I'm just the worst hostess right now. I, I, you know, I love that you're like, I don't see it. But <laughs> to your standards, Amber, you've let yourself down. You know what I mean? Like you feel like you're saying, you're, you're feeling out of sorts. And, and, that, and that can, it can be there overtly, but it can, it can also just be internal at times too, right? You're just, you know that how that happens? Like, I know I'm, I'm supposed to be on, I'm hosting, and people are like, no, you're doing great. This is a great party. Is it? Okay. Is okay. it? As we all stand outside. <laughs> and home and beat them. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great stuff. Thank you. Um, Sarah, 
what's that line about gelt again? The, the what would you want to do to the clerk? Would he were gelt? Want to snip him? Yeah, and what when what what's the actual line? Oh, uh, uh, would he were gelt that had it for my part? Since you do take it, love so much at heart. Yeah, there there's um. I think you can slow that down just a bit so we can get even more of the meaning of what you want to do to him. Mm -hmm. And there's a, and I, and I think there are places, Sarah, that you can, uh, I, I, I love that you're letting him be much more fiery, in, impetuous to sort of Joe Pesci to Bassanio and, and, and which is fantastic. I think there are places you can find to downshift him or or like for example when you when you out Bassanio what if that's a moment when you actually decide to 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 downshift to a place of confidence again hmm. and then lose it again yeah, right because right now it feels like we're at defcon 5 for a while I feel that as well <laughs> that's crazy so, which I think is you know it's there in the text but I think there's now, there's now there's opportunities to be like you know what you know what you know what we're, mm -hmm. I'm gonna breathe, it's all good. It's gonna be fine, especially now that I'm pulling Basani in, my BFF, we'll work this out. And right. then you can start to, you know, the end of the world can come again. Yeah, I, I had this thought this, this, this last time through where I went, my God, like every single thing I'm saying and doing just feels like the wrong thing. And I don't mean like as an actor, I'm sitting here hating myself. I just mean like, Grantiana, like, are you kidding me? And I went, well, Maybe he's somebody who, because I do this, I think oh, I probably shouldn't say that. And then it immediately comes out, you know? So maybe that is my way through this. It's just saying things despite uh, not knowing that you shouldn't be saying them. But but yeah, finding those moments of, I'm gonna get this under control before I completely lose control again is useful. Yeah. And I think there's something fun, Sarah, when Gratiano was like, oh wait, I got it. This is gonna work. Listen to what the band said, right? So there are moments where I think you can have that confidence that is not coming out of desperation, but a sense of, am I right, folks? It's lame, it's lame. Which makes it even worse in a new way. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's great. I think you and you and Marcelo, part of it is, is finding at many different ways to grab at those straws. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Amber, that, that line about riveted with faith, the way you're describing the, the, the ring, you know, when you're, uh, I, th that, that's an opportunity you might want to play with slowing down a little bit, letting us hear that image of like, I always think of like literally like a metal riveter, right? Or a, a, like one of those, I, I don't know, like a big piece of machinery that's just binding it to your hand, like something out of Marvel, mm -hmm. right? Like, let us hear the weight of that. Um, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I found it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and Marcelo and Amber, I, I, I love where you both are heading with the, with the ring, for the ring, you know, that point counterpoint. I, I think you both can actually take just a little more time with each of those cards you put on the table. Great. If you do this, then that, right. And, and allowing that rhythm to be established by you Marcelo and then Amber you meet yeah. him every step of the way yeah I was uh, wondering if um, the reason I had sped it up I was wondering that by slowing it down it becomes too um, kind of um, I don't know punchy is the word and not flowy but I'm going to slow it down and yeah, I let's, tend to, let's see what happens I, I mean I, you're right I don't yeah. I don't think, we know you and I both don't want it to feel overly punchy but you know what I realized what early version of mansplaining <laughs> and it's hilarious because I literally was there and did the thing. Exactly. But here no, you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me explain to you something. Okay, honey. I just want to explain. And if, I, if this meant this and E equals F equals G. Yeah. And, you would right? see that it's it's all good. Yeah, it's, exactly. So I couldn't help you, myself. That's right. Yeah. So Marcel, I think by the time you get to the end of that theorem, right? Yeah. Step back from the back the blackboard like goodwill hunting. Yeah, like, like hey. oh. Look, at, look, look here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You this leave the math out of this, Brendan. <laughs> and that's, a, that's one of those moments, Marcelo, that I'm thinking at the end when you're going, who are you? That's one of the first big moments of, wow, she just took me to town every step of the way. Right. She that's had an answer for every one of those 
exactly. Time, which were really good points. Yes. And now she's she's bested you every every one of those points. Um, and, and Amber, uh, I think, and Aubrey, the can, can we explore a little more of like a, that new idea of, oh, here's a thought. I'm going to be now as liberal as you. Okay. It felt a little prepackaged right now. It felt like we were already ready for that. But to continue to think as a group about how we're backing through the scene, that we don't expect this to go on as long or as badly as it does. So it allows, I think, you and Aubrey both to be like, well, okay, since we're here, you know, part of the fun is watching these two very smart women improvise in a way they wish they didn't have to, but now we're gonna go here. Yeah. But you're improvising in a way that just keeps digging everyone deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, Amber, I think it's Argosies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and um, uh, and and Ross, I think when as as you interject those couple of times, I I think you can let your let let Antonio go even further with his guilt, rising guilt, his sense of do I jump in, do I not? Right. I feel like he's a pretty discreet person in general, mm -hmm. and and ca carries a lot of depth to him. But his choice of having to do what am I? Is this the right time to step in? <laughs> Right, right. Okay. Cool. Amber, are you good? I think we've, oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> um, great, can, can we, can we, are we up for trying again? Pick from the top, Absolutely. see what happens? That would be fun. <laughs> Amber, are you okay? <laughs> good. A lot going on in the house, but we're good. <sighs> This night, methinks, is but the daylight sick. It looks a little paler. Tis a day such as the day is when the sun is hid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we should hold day with the antipodes if you would walk in absence of the sun. Let me give light, but let me not be light. For a light wife doth make for a heavy husband, and never be Bassanio so for me. But God sort all, you are welcome home, my lord. I thank you, madam. Give welcome to my friend. This is the man. This is Antonio, to whom I am so infinitely bound. You should in all sense be much bound to him, for as I hear, he was much bound for you. No more than I am well acquitted of. Sir, you are welcome to our house. It must appear in other ways than words. Therefore, I scant this breathing courtesy. By yonder moon, I swear, you do me wrong. In faith, I gave it to the judge's clerk. Would he were guilt that had it for my part, since you do take it, love, so much at heart? A quarrel? Oh, already, what's the matter? About a hoop of gold, a, a paltry ring that she did give me, whose posy was for all the world, like Cutler's poetry upon a knife. Love me and leave me not. What talk you of the posy or the value? You swore to me when I did give it you that you would wear it till your hour of death and that it should lie with you in your grave. Though not for me, yet for your vehement oaths, you should have been respective and have kept it. Gave it a judge's clerk. No, God's my judge. The clerk will ne'er wear hair on his face that had it. He will, and he lived to be a man. Aye, if a woman lived to be a man. Now by this... By this hand, I gave it to a youth, a, a kind of boy, a, a little scrubbed boy, no higher than thyself, the judge's clerk, a, a prating boy that begged it as a fee. I could not for my heart deny it him. You were to blame. I must be plain with you, to part so slightly with your wife's first gift a thing stuck on with oaths upon your finger and so riveted with faith unto your flesh. I gave my love a ring and made him swear never to part with it. And here he stands. I dare be sworn for him. He would not leave it nor pluck it from his finger for the wealth the world masters. Now in faith, Gratiano, you give your wife too unkind a cause of grief. And twere me, I should be mad at it. Why, I were best to cut my left hand off and swear I lost the ring defending it. 
My Lord Bassanio gave his ring away unto the judge that begged it, and indeed deserved it too. And then the boy, his clerk, that took some pains in writing, he begged mine, and neither man nor master would take aught but the two rings. What ring gave you, my lord? Not that I hope which you received of me. Uh, if I could add a lie unto a fault, I would deny it. But, uh, you see, my, my finger hath no ring upon it. It is gone. Even so void is your false heart of truth. By heaven, I will ne'er come to your bed until I see the ring. <sighs> Nor I in yours till I again see mine. Sweet Portia, if you did know to whom I gave the ring, if you did know for whom I gave the ring and would conceive for what I gave the ring and how unwillingly I left the ring, when naught would be accepted but the ring, you would abate the strength of your displeasure. If you had known the virtue of the ring, or half her worthiness that gave the ring, or your own honor to contain the ring, you would not have parted with the ring. What man is there so much unreasonable if you had pleased to have defended it? With any terms of zeal wanted the modesty to urge the thing held as in a ceremony. Nerissa teaches me what to believe. I'll die for but to some woman had the ring. No. By my honor, madam, by my soul, no woman had it, but a civil doctor, which did refuse three thousand ducats of me, and begged the ring, the which I did deny him, and suffered him to go displeased away, even if he had, had held up the very life of my dear friend. What should I say, sweet lady? I was enforced to send it after him. I was beset with shame and courtesy. My honor would not let ingratitude so much besmear it. Pardon me, good lady, for by these blessed candles of the night, had you been there, I think you would have begged the ring of me to give the worthy doctor. Let not that doctor e'er come near my house, since he hath the jewel that I loved, and that which you did swear to keep for me. I will become as liberal as you. I'll not deny him anything I have. No, not my body, nor my husband's bed. No him I shall. I am well sure of it. Lie not a night from home. Watch me like Argus. If you do not, if I be left alone now by mine honor, which is yet mine own, I'll have the doctor for my bedfellow. And I his clerk. Therefore be well advised how you do leave me to mine own protection. Well, do you so? Let me not take him then, for if I do, I'll mar the young clerk's pen. I am the unhappy subject of these quarrels. Sir, grieve not you. You are welcome, notwithstanding. Portia, forgive me this enforced wrong. And in the hearing of these many friends, I swear to thee, even by thine own fair eyes, wherein I see myself. Mark you but that. <laughs> In both my eyes he doubly sees himself, and each eye one. Swear by your double self, and there's an oath of credit. Nay, but hear me. Pardon this fault, and by my soul I swear I never more will break an oath with thee. I once did lend my body for his wealth, which but for him that had your husband's ring had quite miscarried. I dare be bound again, my soul upon the forfeit, that your lord will never more break faith advisedly then you shall be his surety. Give him this and bid him keep it better than the other. Here, Lord Bassanio, swear to keep this ring. By heaven, it is the same I gave the doctor. I had it of him. Pardon me, Bassanio, for by this ring, the doctor lay with me. And pardon me, my gentle Graziano, for that same scrubbed boy, the doctor's clerk, in lieu of this, last night did lie with me. Why? This is like the mending of highways in summer, where the ways are fair enough. What, are we cuckolds ere we have deserved it? Speak not so grossly. You are all amazed. Here is a letter. Read it at your leisure. It comes from Padua, from Bellario. There you shall find that Portia was the doctor. Nerissa there, her clerk. Lorenzo here shall witness I set forth as but as soon as you, and even but now returned. I have not yet entered my house. Antonio, you are welcome. 
and I have better news in store for you than you expect. Unseal this letter soon. And there you shall find three of your argosies are richly come to harbor suddenly and shall not know by what strange accident I chanced upon this letter. I am dumb. Were you the doctor and I knew you not? You the clerk that is to make me cuckold? Aye, but the clerk that never means to do it, unless he lived to be a man. Sweet doctor, you shall be my bedfellow. When I am absent, then lie with my wife. Sweet lady, you have given me life and living. For here I read for certain that my ships are safely come to road. How now, Lorenzo? My clerk hath some good comforts for you two. Aye, and I'll give them him without a fee. There do I give to you and Jessica, from the rich Jew, a special deed of gift after his death of all he dies possessed of. It is almost morning, and yet I am sure you are not satisfied of these events at full. Let us go in and charge us upon, and charge us thereupon interrogatories, and we will answer all things faithfully. Let it be so. The first interrogatory that my Nerissa shall be sworn on is, whether till the next night she had rather stay or go to bed now, being two hours today. That were the day come, I should wish it dark till I were couching with the doctor's clerk. <clears throat> well, while I live, I'll fear no other thing so sore as keeping safe Nerissa's ring. Nice. Lovely job, folks. I, that was, I think that was wonderful. I mean, what, what you all incorporated, what was that like? Uh, I, I felt like there was so many new things and the, the yeah. temperature changes and what, 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 what was it like for you all? It was a good feel. I mean, it was a, trying to incorporate the notes in, on the run like that, like, like in a rehearsal as you would and uh, finding things and uh, it, it, it was, um, it was, it was it was a nice it was so for me the experience was so much different than the first take you know if, uh, in in a relaxed kind of way i mean meaning that just kind of breathe into it and uh, even i tend to run fast anyway um to to slow it down a little bit and, uh, and and go with those intentions and the the different ways to try to manipulate a little bit and and move through it um and uh, what's hard for me is, is uh, you know, I want to look and I want to look to see people's reaction. And then I think, oh, then the look is all weird because really the look is as you're looking at the, the script that's in front of you. But it's okay. Uh, it, it was, um, I, I found it fulfilling this kind of run through, this, uh, the second one. Yeah. Other thoughts? it's a lot of fun each time because i get to i get to listen and react to what's going on most of the time you know and so so uh, you know not not being you know everybody's lis listening as as all the information's coming but so many of the other characters are trying to jump in and say their piece you know and it's 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 really fun and uh uh, uh being a being able to listen and hear each of those sort of lines, specific lines where, you know, so, some new information is dropped in, you know, really kind of pop out and, um, you know, seeing like, oh, where am I culpable? Where, where is this person culpable? Who's treading and, you know, you know, in places they shouldn't. Um, and, uh, it, you know, each, it, it's, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes when you're, when, when you're listening it, over and over in a scene, you know, it's like, okay, then this happens and this happens and this happens. But, but the fact that it keeps growing every time, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm continually having these sort of like aha moments just from hearing what's happening around me, you know. I saw that, Ross, when, when you slowed down, Marcelo, on that speech of the, who, for whom I gave the ring, when you and Amber did that, which I thought was beautiful, point counterpoint, 
I, I really clocked because you slowed down a little bit there, Marcel. I looked over at you, Ross, when he said, for whom I did this. And I saw you, the, the eight different reactions that, you know, emotions that Antonio is going through of, oh my God, oh, he didn't say my name. Oh, uh, you know, how, thank you. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, so I, I saw you clocking that new information. And that to me was one of those especially vivid moments where, where it felt like, and I saw Antonio was expecting in a way to be outed and you weren't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just had a fun thought that, that time, just as we were going through it. And I, I know it's written as an aside, which usually means to the audience, but I was like, God, if we were on stage, how, what would be the difference between Bassanio delivering the line about, I wish I could cut my hand off, if it, delivering that to the audience or delivering that to Antonio as mm. an aside to Antonio? You know, I thought that, you know, that, I mean, that's a choice for directors yeah. and actors to make in a, in a production, but, you know, it was just something about at that time that like, you know, tweaked my brain a little. But. Which could seem very much like two BFFs, right? Yeah, like, and, I, and I don't know that that, that aside too is, uh, is to the audience more than to himself, right? It's, uh, right, right, it's, right. it's uh, but, but I like the idea of, of, of to himself and then sharing part of it maybe with, with Antonio, right? Um, yeah. yeah. But, um, other, other thoughts, um, Amber, Sarah, Aubrey? Uh, I just appreciated the, the um, active choice that you gave me to um, not be at 10 the entire time. It, being able to slow down was an entirely different experience for this character. Um, and it also, it actually, where it slowed me down the most was uh, in being able to hear everyone else. Um, Cause I think if I'm, if I'm in a mood where I'm speaking fast, then I'm gonna be in a mood where I'm listening fast as well. And so the, they're, they're so linked to each other. So I, I heard things that I haven't heard before in this scene in a whole new way, which is really a, nice. It was a relief. <laughs> I felt like I was in the same scene with everybody finally. <laughs> well, and, and well, yes, but Sarah also, I think it was it was really important to find those those peaks earlier mm -hmm. in the process, so you could get hold of those and you use those. You just use them more sparingly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amber, Aubrey, any thoughts? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say this is just brings it so it's so clear how much uh, it benefits from uh, these scenes benefit from from this amount of thought and care and table work because this scene is so is relatively short it moves really quickly it's the end of a comedy I feel like it would be really easy to gloss over all of these really tiny things we keep finding and then the shifts happen so quickly just in terms of the experience of being in it from like you know, flirty to fighty to guilty. I mean, it just, there's so much going on every moment. And so allowing ourselves the time to ex explore that and find that, and I'm sure we could continue to find many more, but uh, yeah, I'm just, it, it's really apparent to me how, how much we could dig and, and that how beneficial it is. So that's what I'd say, yeah. Aubrey, that um, reminds me of uh, the end of uh, a much earlier of his comedies, Two Gentlemen of Verona, that, you know, it, it's a much more straightforward uh, setup. There's not as many uh, maybe cultural themes going on, but there's there's the potential rape, there's the the, the broken friendship, and, and yet it's like, you know, a comedy. But, you know, so it's the same kind of thing of like, there's all this very weighty stuff going on and uh, yeah, like how much you can uh, explore from moments. I'm sorry, I just wanted to jump in. It, it's really been wonderful to watch all you guys. And I, and I, I want us to continue the discussion a little bit. And, and Amber, if there was something uh, you wanted to add before we kind of you know, talk about uh, any other points, but. Uh... Yeah, uh, Brendan, I really enjoyed that note about um, pacing and discovery. I thought it gave, uh, same to what Sarah and Aubrey were saying, I heard new lines of my own, but also other people that I was like, that's a good argument and I'm gonna have to, respond to that later um, and then could find when she could get a word in to what you were saying, Ross, or when someone else spoke too quickly and now the, the point has passed, it, it happens really quickly. Um, but yeah. I felt like your, your Portia too, Amber, when you were slowing her down and, and you used that melancholy of hers, I felt like she aged in this pass, literally or figuratively. I felt like she, I felt like you were caring more. Portia was, was more uh, uh, dealing with ambivalence and bittersweet feelings and 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 very complicated, even more complicated feelings. And I I really saw you trying to kind of get on, you know, try to engage with the game. But I saw the cost. I saw that it was um, 
it was difficult for yeah. you to, to navigate? Did you feel that? That note was really helpful. The idea of putting the mask on and uh, what are we losing? And just me thinking through all the time she mentions her own freedom or her own intellect and um, going back to something we talked about last week of, of knowing that that freedom is slipping away the closer they get to consummating the marriage and that we are closer and closer to becoming property. And I, yeah, this, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Brent. I was just going to say that the, one of my last things was I, I thought the ending was, was uh, where you went, where the men went in terms of uh, the, the penny dropping of were you, were you the doctor? And I think where, where Sarah and Marcelo, I really saw some very different colors in, those la in that last page and watching the sobriety and the, the, the newness of, of these, the way you're looking at these women. Um, and, and not really, and, and really um, uh, at sea, so to speak, about yeah. where, how to, how to grasp it. And the simplicity of that was, I thought really powerful. Yeah, me. I love the, uh, the simplicity and also the, the, uh, the little, the, the, the tentativeness of walking on eggshells on that last line that you gave that note about, you know, it's just, uh, that landed for me too. Um, that note. Uh, if we, if we had another moment to go back and do it again, I'd, I'd the the thing that I wasn't prepared for was you know making that switch to that that awe and that respect and then dropping back into that clunkiest ending of all time um, was such a I was like oh oh we're back back in the sex jokes again oh, okay I missed that transition well but Sarah it's still Graziano right Graziano's yeah. gonna Graziano I mean if we've learned anything it's like you you right. got but that's not. But it's like you can move the needle somewhat. But you know, it, he's not totally a different person. But I. But I will say, Sarah. At the same time, I felt like you went to the sex joke. But then at the end, I thought I saw a new color there. Where I don't know if you felt this, Aubrey. But when you when you gave her those last few lines of "I will think of nothing else but keeping keeping care taking care of her ring," I believed you for the first time. Oh, good. I, I felt like oh. This guy actually is not, has stopped for a second, the joke machine. And he doesn't know how he's going to do it, mm -hmm. but he knows it's important. I don't know. Aubrey, did you yeah. hear, did you I get just like the, the subtext then is because you're worth it. Yep. Which has, I mean, really, isn't that what we've just wanted to know this entire time? Like, isn't that, the, isn't that the thing we've actually been trying to find out if we're yeah. worth it to them? Yeah, it, it's a fun little swoop. It's like it's swooping into one more joke and then back to the the, the new fresh sobriety in a nice way. Yeah, it, it. I mean, as an observer, it it like that the second time the ending felt like oh, I think everybody is actually going to be okay, and including Antonio. Like there there just seemed to be a little bit more hopefulness uh, about everyone, and 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 of course that's that's my own kind of interpretation of what I saw, but. Uh, that was uh, that was the energy that uh, that came through for me. Yeah, I I, and, I yeah. think David, I I would agree. I think what I got that second time was, I I think there's a chance. Hmm. I, I I think if they can keep this up, if Graziano can lower the joke quotient, if Bassanio can turn off the charm machine, right, and they can grow the f up, maybe there's a chance. Whereas I think last week. I don't know, would we all agree that we were, I, I, I think there was no hope for these couples where we ended it at the end of last week, which was fine. I mean, like to me, right, that's right. That's a certain valid production. And I'm, I'm, I'm not in any way saying we need to move towards a bow on the, you know, the wedding cake with any of this, but I agree, Nathan, like to me, because we saw a little maturity, uh, sobriety, simplicity mm -hmm. from Marcelo and Sarah at the end. And I felt like you, you um, Amber and Aubrey, uh, heard that or saw that I felt like you received it and it's and you're you know you're noting it it's not yeah. like all the, all is forgiven but this idea of value it just occurred to me Arby I never thought of this quite this way before but isn't that kind of one of the big themes of the play you realizing it's value monetarily the ships mm. the value of my body my soul my relationships like what value do you place on anything I didn't quite, I don't think I, that quite hit me to such mm -hmm. a degree until we were working on this. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the, the discussion is so, uh, so rich. It's, it's wonderful. And, and, and that I want to touch on that again in a second. Um, 
you know, I was just thinking about Graziano at the end. I think there, there are many people that use as a defense mechanism humor. And so like in an uncomfortable moment, it's just, we all feel this is uncomfortable and I need to say something to get us through this moment. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was really great. The different colors uh, Sarah found uh, at the end there. Um, and, and the other thing I wanted to, if I'm interpreting the line correctly, I love that there's a 400 year old traffic joke that uh, Graziano throws in there that it's just like, we all still know like, Really? Like we just, we want to get to the beach and they wanted to work on the road this week. Like why, why are they doing like, cause they get to use their, they, yeah, they have to use their budget up. Like, God, why are they doing this? They know we're all going to the beach this week. Um, yeah. I just love it. That it's so still so timeless. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. Nathan was like, that's why I heard that more this time than, than before. And I, I mean, it tells you again, something about Graziano, right? Where right. his priorities are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, there's a lot I wanted to highlight about the work that you guys did. I'll just, admit, I'm gonna drop something in uh, the chat for people. Again, if you're enjoying this kind of discussion, this kind of process, we do have the new program repertory. Uh, Brendan is actually one of the directors in that and Sarah is in the company uh, uh, working on Twelfth Night. Um, so you can, you can kind of keep uh, uh, chugging along with us as, as we work on Twelfth Night. Um, but coming back to uh, the merchant, you know, what I loved about this group particularly is you guys spent so much time discussing the scene. And uh, as Aubrey mentioned, there is so much to talk about and so much to unpack. Um, and just one of the things I wanted to kind of highlight that I, I think uh, was, it was great to have such a spirited discussion about this um, was just kind of what is okay for men but maybe not okay for women uh, and so like that the introduction of like that the women might have been philandering too and and just you know well is this you know I just wanted to kind of hear um, you know from the company uh, you know what was it like to to be able to discuss that and, and maybe some things that you um, uncovered or, or just being able to bring that in you know to the scene that, that you had the time to really think about that um, if anyone wanted to kind of share their thoughts and just just that discussion of the male the um uh, expectations i guess of of what is okay for men versus women can i jump in on this yeah. um, uh graziano right after the traffic joke he says um what are we cuckolds ere we have deserved it which is a line that i really latched onto in this process this like graziano is a character who knows he is going to end up cheating on his wife. He, he knows that that is a given and he assumes that it's a given with Bassanio as well, which is uh, what makes this discovery that we've had right here at the end, at least for me, all the more rewarding that Graziano actually might have a hope of change, that it does take um, seeing Nerissa, seeing her in a completely new light to understand that maybe this is somebody I get to see on an equal level. Um, because I, I think it is just throughout, it is the assumption that there is that double standard. I, um, you know, what I love about it, uh, uh, this man woman thing, right? Is that he, he captures it in a way that is so real because for us that are, that are in relationships, whatever the, the partner is, there's the men and women thing is like think the men, the men are from Mars and the women are from Venus, right? That, that it's so evident here that the guys are they're trying to think things through, but the women are always ahead. I I, I mean I find that that you know with in in all in my with my wife and, and thirty two years right she like she she thinks that it's ahead. I mean she's always ahead of me, and I think it, it's very clear here in the way the 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 guys are going like yeah hey you should understand they go mm -mm, you promised you know there's a, that difference between men and women to, is very clear in here um and and how they 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 work and how men are they seem to struggle and the women seem to be really knowing what's going on i kind of love that about this I mean, not to let a a a antonio totally off the hook but i i'm curious ross we, we talked about this a little bit last week where do you think Antonio, what have you discovered about where Antonio lies on that, um, um, you know, gender role uh, approach paradigm? Oh gosh, ah, I hadn't even really considered it, uh, it, it I guess, in, until this moment, because it's kind of, you know, as far as 
it, it hasn't even been on, on my radar as far as Antonio goes, um, except for the, 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 although I will say that, that uh, before we did this the first time today, when you said, hey, why don't, why don't we exit in this order and Antonio's the last one off? And I, and I thought, okay, well, I have to do something with that moment. And I, and I just quickly did the math and I said, okay, a couple goes this way, a couple goes this way. There's a couple that's in the scene, but we don't have characters for, they go off that way. And they've all been sort of reunited with, with their, their partner and I'm reunited with my partner. You know, it, it's it, Antonio's thing has been has been you know the the concern over over the, you know his money, his friendship, and this and that. Well, he he doesn't lose his friend, but he sort of you know he, it, it's very clear now that he's he's in second place as far as obligation goes. You know, uh, in his friend's life, um, you know, and so it's yay this this I, this great news just came. Everything's so wonderful, but now in the context of everything that I've just witnessed and everyone going off. I, I am alone, and so there's you know I I I I don't know how much how much of the male female dynamic um, it, it just I hadn't really thought of it in terms of that way but more of the life priorities and obligations and uh, uh, loyalties and, and and that sort of thing I guess. Um, I, I want to pick up on on something you were talking about uh, or you mentioned there, Ross. Is that and 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 I know you guys talked about Brendan that. What what is wonderful about this medium is that everybody has a close up that you get to see the reactions of everybody in the scene, and and this is a, a great representative scene because you know everybody's being talked about uh, and being referenced even if they don't have dialogue, and um, you know even uh, you know Lorenzo and Jessica who have lines early in the scene, but you know they say nothing during almost all of this, and then even when Narissa presents you know the the gift all Lorenzo says is basically, thank you. And, and you know, th there's not an extended discussion there. So it's, it, it's just, it's just a fascinating, I mean, we didn't explore this casting a Jessica or Lorenzo, but it would be very fascinating in this medium just to see, you know, Antonio, Lorenzo and Jessica just, just there. And like, how are they taking in this whole scene the whole time? I mean, I think, uh, you know, Ross, it was, it was interesting to hear, you know, you, you know, what you had kind of been working on and, and your perspective in the scene, because I, I think it also highlights that, um, you know, that, that old adage that there are no small parts, you know, and all that kind of stuff, that there's actually a lot for Antonio in this scene. Um, you know, there, there's a lot for you to be, you know, listening to and responding to. And because you're being taught, I mean, as you say, like, I'm, I'm the person that this is all because of, like, I, you know, and then you finally feel compelled to say something. So it's just, it's, it's really fascinating to um, just, you know, see how well you guys use the medium for all of those, you know, to, to, to stay so involved in the scene um, and stay so engaged. It was, so I, I just want to kind of make more of a note of that, that uh, it was really uh, exciting to watch and just to see everybody have, uh, have a life that, you know, as Brendan has mentioned, you know, you're not just upstage uh, in the, in the shadows that, everybody's on screen uh so yeah it was it was a lot of fun i mean did, i we, we mentioned it a little bit with ross but did anyone else you know find that a a, a challenge or a, a delight to you know have to be so engaged the whole time or did it help with the process any any thoughts on that it's just always it's it's always great to be able to remind yourself that you're never you never get to check out you never get to you know think about w what you're having for dinner or whatever it, you just have to be present you have to listen um yeah. and all of the discoveries then you make oh you're like oh that isn't even my cue but they're referencing me they're talking about me they're talking about something that affects me uh, i have an opinion on that i have an opinion on that uh so uh, you know, I also teach acting to co college students and, and we, the first thing we work on is listening. And it, you know, I think it is, and I say this in the, in the room, I think it is the, the simplest and the hardest skill as an actor. I think it is, we all think, oh, listening, cool. I, yeah, I can do that. And then we're like, how often in life do we actually just fully listen to somebody? Uh, so it's, um, yeah, it's an active, it's an active thing. And we've, you can't you cannot be like you say you cannot be on your heels in your yeah. mind you have to be on your tippy toes and perched yeah 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 it's it's a great i mean aubrey i think you bring up a great example like in, in real life 
if, if you ever have done the exercise where somebody says something, especially if you're on opposite sides of a, of a, of a, of a discussion, if one person says something and then go, okay, now repeat back what you just heard, very often it's very different because we all have our own filters, we all have our own perspectives. Uh, and so, so yeah, to really, like you said, it's a very, uh, it's a skill that you really have to work at. It, it's, you know what it is, because we were just having this discussion with my daughter and my wife the other day. It's about, um, because you want to interrupt somebody. So they're t saying something, you have a thought. So then you're not present. And it's that thing about being present in the listening, right? Present in the moment. Then you're listening and not thinking about how you're going to answer yet, right? It's it, it, And it's the hardest thing in the world. In life, and I think on stage too, is, is a difficult thing to be just in the moment present. I mean, that's what we all fight to to do. And, and I think when that happens, it's it flies. And, and I think it's so fascinating that Shakespeare gives you text that you need to do both. That you know something's you know somebody says something in you that catapults you into wanting to say something, and yet at the same time, there's a lot of verbal wordplay. Like you pay, you are actively listening because you pick up on what somebody's saying, and very often you'll repeat it or you'll say the opposite. And so you know it's it's that it's that balance of not only not only. Now, do I want to tell you my opinion? But I've also, but I have been listening to what you've been saying. So it's it's such a it's such a great, um, you know, dexterity and and a, a challenge for for an actor to be able to have to or to do both of those things at the same time to be so fiercely uh, 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 want to declare what you have to say, but then also really be listening to the other person. Uh, and I think this is a great scene again where you have Marcelo, as you've talked about. Um, well, you know, this, well, this is how I see it. Like, isn't this very clear? Like, this is obvious. And so you, you come in with these very strong opinions. So, um, Nathan, can I, can I, yeah, really yeah quick, please, Brenda. Let's circle back to a question you had posed a few minutes ago. And I'd love, I don't think I, I am I, if I'm wrong, but, um, I'd love, you were asking about the idea of gender roles in the scene. And I, I don't think we had heard from Amber Aubrey on this. And I just, I would love to, to, uh, I, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts if, if you two are up for that. I'm up for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, is why, this is why I, I mean, use the word spirited. Uh, yeah. No, I'm kidding. This is why I use the word spirited because I, I remember that <laughs> you know, it was it was it was a good discussion. It was a healthy discussion. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I think this is historical, right? I mean, th this this idea of, of of fidelity and fidelity and like um, taking it for granted that the that the men will cheat and the women will stay home, but also, like, I just want to pose for a second, like, who has the power in infidelity? If a man cheats, what happens? He gets a bastard kid. If a woman cheats and nobody finds out, that kid gets the fortune. You know what I'm saying? Like, if a, if a woman cheats and has a kid and like out of, you know, and, and the husband never finds out, like your, you know, daddy's genes don't get passed on, <laughs> right? So there is this like, in a way, like no wonder there's, I don't know, I just think there's, that's so, that's what's so interesting to me about this conversation about fidelity is there's sort of like, oh yeah, men will cheat, like no big deal, but like the women, they'll be cool. But w the consequences really come like if the women do, you know what I mean? So this whole like, well, we cheated on you, you know, that, that rule reversal is, could be like legitimately I don't know, terrifying is the wrong word, but it upends the whole structure. Like all that money you made, all that work you did, it's going to some other other guy's kid, not yours. Um, so I just also think that that's, I don't know, that's an interesting thing uh, to think about. And the fact that the men, like historically, I mean, this is, you know, you look at like Henry VIII, right? Who's like, no, I'm sleeping with a million other women, but if, if I hear uh, that my wife's cheating off with her head, so, I don't know. I just, uh, it's, there's so much to unpack there. Uh, and, you know, I think we like to think that we're really progressive, but I think there must, there's still some of that in society today and how that, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it's a fascinating topic and I will end there <laughs> so I, and let Amber speak because I could talk forever on it, I'm sure. No, I'm always down for a nice chat about Shakespearean bastards. I think they're <laughs> some of the most fascinating characters he writes. Um, I thought a lot about the world of law as a man's world and the fact that they literally are judge, jury, and execute, executioner. Um, and for us, the smartest people in that room to have to infiltrate it um, to save our husband's ass and like their best friend have to do so in secret and in hiding. Um, and then have to think, is this a secret we want to reveal? You know, at the top of the scene, everyone's like, we won't tell if you won't, like we will keep it a secret. Um, 
and for us to think through that that point but also have to deal with our honor being on the line and the rings being representative of us and of a vow that our husbands made to us and then giving them away is is a direct um slight to us but also is tells a lot about their values and who and what they value more than us and for new relationships new marriages it's it's a really rocky foot to get off on especially if we know um like Aubrey and Sarah and everyone has been talking about that, they're, they're probably going to be unfaithful, whether they do that in a way that is um, kinder to us and that we don't know the woman or don't know that it's happening or it doesn't bear children is one thing, but most likely um, we are not the true love matches of a lot of the other comedies. Um, not in that we don't love them, but in that we can't trust their word. And the whole play has proved that they, they're liars. Um, and if we're not gonna move forward with that, being what men are allowed to do and women are not allowed to do, then we need to set some ground rules of I'm an intelligent being too. And I have agency and it's uh, very much the Amelia monologue. You have me thinking about Othello now, Brendan, um, about women. And like, you know, we, we can do the shit men do and we can hurt feelings too. So if that's what it's going to take, let's hypothetically hurt your feelings in this situation. But the fact that sex is the power that they have to use and it hasn't even been used on these men in their, in their real relationship is really interesting. Can I say one more thing too? Um, the, correct me if I'm wrong, but in most of the comedies um, at the resolution of the marriage, you know, when it is determined that this couple is getting married, the women stops having lines for the most part. You know, Beatrice kiss, I will stop your mouth. She doesn't talk for the rest of the play. Hero doesn't speak, you know, for the for the rest of the play, as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure that tracks through most of the comedies. And this is one of the rare comedies where we get to see these women speak all the way through to the end. Just at, which I, I think, in contrast, and especially for an audience that is used to the women stopping speaking in this um, theatrical construct, is this extra symbol of power that we probably don't notice as a contemporary audience because we are used mm -hmm. in contemporary theater for women speaking through to the end. So it's just, it's this final badass power move by these two women to be driving all the way to the end of this play. Yeah, um, that's a very cool, very interesting observation. Very interesting. Um, well, just as I, I, we could clearly talk about this for another couple hours, uh, I, I, just to wrap it up uh, a little bit, uh, Sarah, I'd love to hear um, f from you, you know, in terms of uh, b being one of the actors that, you know, signed up for this and, and working on the scene in this way, I'd love to hear about your experience um, working on the text this way, uh, in this context, you know, with, with these individuals. What, what, was your, uh, what was your experience working on the scene? Oh my God, I loved it. Uh, this was so great. Um, uh, Brendan leads the rehearsal room in a way that is, I don't know, like 80 or 90% conversation and discussion. I don't know if that's your normal process, but that's how it felt for this one. It was so much um, grounding discussion, which um, when we actually went to the script, I went, oh my God, the picture is so complete in my head now. So I don't need to run through this a thousand times and stumble through it and hope that um, you know something will clarify by the end. We 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 talked through it. We really got in there and um, massaged and dug, and it's it's the way that I would like to do all scene work going forward. So you're not losing your voice by the end of the first rehearsal because you've just been trying to you know blindly plow your way through it. It was it was it's so enriching. And I I said this to these guys. I have done this play in a different role and um, three weeks of discussion in this room, I unpacked probably as much as I did working on that play four months. <laughs> First time I did, because there was such an emphasis on um, the, the, the background and the nuance of, of these characters and the play itself. And everybody here is just so wildly intelligent and informed. It was, I mean, it was, it was a joy every minute of it. Well, it was I'm a wonder, wonder to work this way. I also, Brendan, I just loved the process um, of this work, of this particular workshop. Um, it uh, it just it just comes in, it comes in and into the brain in a very cool way. Uh, and and I rather than run and run run the scene, right? I mean, because that's not it's this is a process oriented um, 
uh, rehearsal or process oriented workshop which is it should always be process oriented and then you know the result you stay out of the results and then the results come because you've gone through the process right and and i for it for me and it was just been one of my favorites man you just yeah, I, I, I have uh, to say, I, I was I was very much looking forward to to working with Brendan. It's been, I think, over ten years since I've gotten the chance to work with Brendan. And uh, uh, yes, like rehearsals are this rich and wonderful, even when you're staging a play with Brendan. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where you spend you you get so much depth. I mean, we've all been in in, in rehearsals where you know, the director's freaked out about how much time you have, you get everything on its feet too quickly, and then you're just doing the exact same thing for two weeks and, and there isn't much growth. And it's it, taking this, that's one of the things I love about working with Brendan is how much, uh, uh, how much you figure out before you even get to your feet. And then you don't have to make all the mistakes on your feet and fix them all and wind back two weeks and figure out where you went wrong. You figure it out, you get it on his feet and it's, and it's rich and it's there and it's just, it's, it's great. And so, so thank you, thank you, Brendan and Nathan for, for this opportunity. This is awesome. Thank you, everybody. I mean, I, I will say uh, it's been, I, I, I think I've said this in the past, I so look forward to these hours because it, it takes, it really, I know this is cliche, but it really does take a village. For this to, to, to be the process, you were talking about Sarah and, and Marcelo and Ross, and thank you for your kind words. Uh, I, it, it, I think every it, it's it was about everybody also bringing their most vulnerable selves and curious selves to this discussion. And I felt like people were not afraid to quote get out of their lane or think, well, here's a thought, even though this isn't exactly my line or or what's what this whole beat is about. That we were collectively coming with the whole picture, like you were saying, Marcel. This this idea of what's the world we're we're talking about. It, everyone I felt was I I, I hope. It seemed to me like everybody was feeling they could offer up a thought at any point, which to me makes it really exciting because I, I felt like the amount of discoveries we were making, and uh, I, I agree, Ross, I just don't think there's much value in just running and running into the ground. Um, it is, it's so important to connect those dots, right? I mean, look at our two runs today. We're, it, it, we're extraordinary each in their own way, but I think it's, to me, it's also about the discussion that it was everyone was bringing back to what what are the, what's going on with these people, right? I felt like our discussion wasn't going down tangents or rabbit holes that were not germane to the scene, but that I I felt like everybody was trying to also offer up when you were confused or I'm still struggling with this moment. I mean, even what we were just happening today, right, with with Aubrey and and Amber, that moment about the legal ease. And we've done lots of that, right? Of flips and wait, scratch that, reverse it, like Willy Wonka would say, right? Like we don't, we don't, we and and I think being open to sort of revision rather and not trying to get to the way, I think is it to me is really exciting. And that's what I felt like everybody was was bringing to this every time was this sense of 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 wonder. Well. Uh... Well done, Brendan. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm thrilled that uh, everybody had such a great experience. And and I remember uh, being part, you know, being present for the first rehearsal. And I was telling somebody later, I said, I think they, I don't, I'm like, I don't even know if they read the scene that that first rehearsal. But I was like, and yet I know when they get there, it's going to be as rich because of all the discussion. So it's uh, it, it was great to see. Um, I, I just want to mention there was a, a comment. I hope I'm getting this name right. It was Nisi or maybe Nisi or, or uh, but, but she says uh, Nisi. Nisi, Nisi. Okay, thank you. So she says, my six-year-old is ready to have his mama's attention. Great work all. Love seeing open hearts, discussing big ideas and making connections. Thanks for the space. So uh, thanks for the space. And uh, there, there, I remember there were some uh, other uh, celebration emojis and all that kind of stuff after the scene. So uh, thank you to all the attendees. Uh, I, I'll just quickly uh, introduce everybody now that you've seen all their work, but we have Brendan Fox as the director, Marcelo Tuber as Bassanio, Ross Helwig, Antonio, Amber Scales, Portia, Abra Sabri Aubrey Sabrino as Narissa, and Sarah Mountjoy Pepka as Gratiano. So um, thank you all of the attendees uh, uh, for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, peek into uh, an exploration of The Merchant of Venice. The, believe me, I could let this group keep going and, and, and another month they'd probably have more things to reveal and, and share and discoveries. So uh, the work doesn't end. That's, that's the fun part about this stuff. So, uh, but uh, thank you all, all very much for being here.
Uh, the Merchant of Venice uh, group, you guys can hang out. Um, and for the attendees, uh, you can either uh, uh, just leave the meeting or I will move people back into the uh, waiting room. Uh, we'll send out replay links and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, again, thanks so much uh, for being here. So, all right. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Nathan. Yes. Thank, you. thank you, cast. I mean, what a what a what a great group. You're spoiling me. You realize that, right? <laughs> like with with the discussions like this, it's it's uh, it's really wonderful.